All right, let's get started. Um, hey, is there something going on? Like, no, it's. I mean, it's, 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 it's the finals week before finals week before finals week. Yeah. That's yeah. I think it's junior. We just got the Junior skip. I have three I should I should turn off the recording is what I should do. <laughs> oh no, you should say oh, you should say something very interesting and then cut it off. Like this is gonna be on the final. I don't know, because then I'll be on the Yeah, that's a good idea. So so let let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the final exam or what you need to know. So here's the answers. So the final should be a breeze now. Everybody in here, you, you've got that taken care of. So we really appreciate that. that thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm glad that, that that helped. I mean, did the solution help? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. Okay. Um, so there's not a whole lot in terms of announcements. Um, homework number nine is due Friday uh, of next week. Um, I'd say the vast chunk of, uh, of homework number nine you should be able to complete after today. Um, there's the final problem on homework number nine. We probably aren't going to get to that today, but we'll definitely probably cover it on Monday. Um, the way things are going, we might not need to meet on Wednesday. So it, it, I, I don't want to say that's the case because some of these column design problems we're getting ready to do can be kind of long. So, uh, just something to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, that's basically all I got. Oh, course evals. Remember, 10 bonus homework points uh, for anybody who does their course eval. But you've got to do it, and you've got to upload the picture that says that you did it, or I don't know that you did it. I've got 11 people that have uploaded the picture indicating that they've completed their course evals, but I know 12 people did it. So, somebody did it, and I'm not going to know who did it unless you upload it. And again, that's free homework points. So... Something to keep in mind. But again, if you got any comments or, or, or suggestions, please, I, I take that stuff pretty seriously. Okay. Columns. Let's talk about columns and specifically column design. So um, I'm going to go through the, the process pretty quickly because we've got uh, a couple examples going into the process. So I don't need to go uh, uh, into that very explicitly. But, you know, once we determine our factored load, we guess a reinforcement ratio. We calculate the required gross area, and then we calculate the required amount of reinforcement. So we had done an example last time where we said, okay, let's say you have a gross area, and you calculate that it needs to be greater than or equal to, I don't remember the number I used, but something like 146.9 square inches. Like I just made that up. And then we said, well, if you have a square column, you can just take the square root of that number to determine the dimensions of the column. And then if you have a circular column, you would say, okay, the diameter is 4 over pi times that. <coughs> and then the square root of that. Okay. Now, I don't remember explicitly how the numbers worked out, but I think, uh, and don't quote me, I just made these numbers up. But I think this number came out to something like 12, uh, like 12.1 inches, and this came out to something like 13.6 inches. I, I please don't don't quote me on that. It, 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 that could be wrong. But the point I was making is, um, you know, we've got this minimum gross area requirement which we can compute, and so that would be this right here. And then if we were dealing with a square column. We could determine the required column size, and we could determine the required diameter if it was a circular column. And what we can do, and this is what might seem a little strange, but what we can do for columns is we can say for this, we could say we'll use a 14-inch uh, diameter column. So if you see it written like this, it just means diameter. But here, we could very easily actually round this down and say, use a 12 by 12. And you might think to yourself, well, that flies in the face of everything that you've been saying all semester, Dr. Mike, because what that means is, you know, we're solving for a required column size, and typically you would round that up 
you know, like this is what we need, so we're going to provide a little more. Well, the way that I'm able to do that is I'm solving for a required gross area, but then instead of determining the amount of steel by just taking this and multiplying it by 0 0.02, I take the actual column size that I picked, and I then say, okay, using this actual column size, what's the required amount of steel? So it, it's sort of like I'm using an assumption to figure out the size of the column, and then I use the actual size of the column to figure out how much steel I need. And it's, it's a very similar process. All I do is I take this expression right here, and I just solve for AST. So I multiply it out, lump together all the AST terms, factor it out, and solve. Uh, so it's just a little bit of algebra to get right here. So to be clear, once you get your column size, you cannot take your column size and just multiply it by your, re your assumed reinforcement ratio to get the amount of steel. I'm taking the actual column dimensions and recalculating how much steel I need. So what, what happens is this. So go back to the process. A good starting reinforcement uh, ratio is something like 0.02. Okay? That's a good starting value. That's just an assumption that we're going to use to get a column size. Now, if I take that column and I bump it up a little bit, what's going to happen is my actual reinforcement ratio is going to be smaller than that. Because a bigger column, I don't need as much reinforcement. Whereas on the flip side, if I take the column and I make it a bit smaller, the reinforcement ratio has got to go up a bit to balance that out. But the big thing is you cannot take this actual size of the column and just multiply it by this. You've got to solve for the amount of steel. Now, once you do that, you check all your little details, your tie, your all that, and, you know, tie spacing, uh, all that, and there you go. All right. Sound good? All right. We're going to do a couple design problems to, to give you a feel as to how this works. This is a really straightforward process as long as you follow the process. So i got two problems. One's a square tie column. One's a circular uh, a spirally reinforced column. So we'll do the, the square one first. So we're going to design a square tied column to support a dead load of 130 kips, a live load of 180 kips, and we'll begin by assuming a row value of 0.02, and we'll use 4 KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel. It's a pretty straightforward design problem, uh, pretty simple. So So the big thing I'll write here is assume. Alright. Now um, we know that the dead load is 130 kips and the live load is 180 kips. So where is so what first off what do I do? There we go. Alright. Should be like the the, the go-to answer with dead loads and live loads. Usually that's also the right answer. So PU 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live, so 1.2 times 130, 180, 444. Do I have a second on that? Now, one other question. Uh, this is a square tied column. So from an 
ACI design perspective, there's two values that I can uh, that, that I'm going to need for a column design. If I'm using a square tied column, what two values does that tell me about? As opposed to a round, circular, spirally reinforced column. Phi and alpha. Phi and alpha. And so what are phi and alpha for a square tied column? 0.65 and 0.8. There we go. So phi is 0 0.65. Alpha is 0 0.8, and so if you want a reasoning for that, it's because it's a square. Or no, 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 no. Let me let me let me rewrite that. I keep interchanging this. Tie column. Most tie columns are square, so that's why it's easy to mess that up. It's one of those like. What is it? All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares, kind of thing. So it's it's easy for me to uh, mix that up. Okay. So we've got our factored load, and so this is how our design philosophy is going to work. So we're going to start off with the required gross area, right? So if there's two design expressions that you're really going to need, and that's this one and this one. Okay, so let me. Oh, Let's take the gross area one first. I'm just copying and pasting that. So again, there's no magic behind this expression. All I'm doing is taking this expression, replacing the steel area with rho times the gross area, and just doing some algebra to solve for AG. So it's, it's not like it's um, uh, anything. Uh, remarkably complicated. But here's your expression for um, for minimum gross area. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward formula. So let's plug and chug and let's see what we get. So AG minimum equals. I know that's really big, but I, I write really big. So, so 0 0.65 0 0.8, and we're going to have brackets, so 0 0.85, which is 4 KSI, and then 1 minus rho, that's going to be 0 0.98 plus 60 KSI times 0 0.02, and so I can Cut that fraction off a bit. And then on the top, 444 kit. And so what does that come out to be? So again, 188.4. Do I have a second on that? Oh. What are my units? It's just squared. It's an area. We're taking kips and we're dividing it by kips per square inch. So you flip and multiply the units. Okay, and so 188.4. Did I get a second on the value? Okay. All right. So that's the um, that's the area of the column. This is a square column. So I can take B minimum to be 188, or sorry. So if I want to determine the, the dimension of the column, what do I do? Square root. There we go. So one eighty-eight point four inches squared. And so, what does that come out to be? Thirteen point seven inches. Do I have a second on that? Okay. All right. So let's be crystal clear as to what we're going to do. So we'll say nineteen a. I just want to write this down so that everybody sees what we're doing. 
Okay, we started out for, for, for this example with a row of 0 0.02. Okay, now what we did is we solved for a B minimum of 13.7 inches. Now, what I'm going to do is this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I have 13.7. Typically, when you're sizing columns, you, you'll want to do them in like even inch increments. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say 13.7, let's use 14, okay? So I'm going to say let's use a 14 by 14 column. Okay, so we're going to use a 14 by 14 column. So Help me out. If you're using a 14 by 14 column, what is the area of a 14 by 14 column? 14 squared. 14 squared is 196, right? So let me be clear. The column size okay, that we needed was 188.4. What we're doing is we're using a column larger than that. So by using a larger column, let's see when this is all said and done, what actually happens to row G, because that's going to be kind of important. Now, how are we going to determine row, or how are we going to determine this, or how are we going to determine our steel? How much steel do you need in this column? It is not that times 0 0.02, okay, because we've changed the size of the column. But now that we know the size of the column, we can solve for AST. So how do we solve for AST? Just a little more algebra. So I'm just going to use this second expression. So all this is, this equation here, it's nothing more than taking this, rewriting it, and solving for AST. Just a little bit of algebra. Yes? In practice, whenever you get like a B min, B13.7, mm -hmm. would it be uh, logical to rent, like, calculate it using 14 by 14 and also calculate it as a 12 and see which one is more complex? It's not a bad idea. I mean, uh, in practice, there's this lovely thing called Microsoft Excel. And so you could build this massive spreadsheet to say, okay, here's potential column options. And then how much is concrete per cubic yard? How much is steel per pound? And figure out which is the cheapest. That's very possible. There's also something to be said about more bars equals more labor. So that's why, you know, unless it's really close, probably in practice what I would do is round up because more concrete means less bars to tie, but that's me. It just depends on the price of steel, the project, and what we're talking about. Does that make sense? These are good questions. I like that stuff. All right. Okay, so let's screen capture this one. So again, to determine the required amount of steel, I'm copying and pasting again. I'm using, oh, I'm using a new expression. Not hard, just plug and check. So let's see the top. So that's 444 kips minus. Now be careful with this. I'm going to show you something. So this is phi alpha, so 0 0.65, 0 0.85, then 0 0.85 again, then 4 KSI, then 196 square inches. Okay. I'm going to write this out, and I'm going to go through this formula again just to make sure everybody's clear as to where this is. Isn't alpha just 0 0.8? Is it 0 0.8? Oh, that's right. It is 0 0.8. Thank you. For circular, for, for spiral columns, it's 0.85, so you're going to write that again. Thank you. All right, so 0 0.65, 0 0.8, 60 KSI minus 0 0.85. 4 KSI. 
Now, the big thing with this formula is where it says AG, do not put in 188.4. Put in the actual size of the column. See, when you're using this formula, what you're saying is, I know how big the column is. I just need to know how much steel uh, goes in there. This formula up top is, I have no idea how big the column is. Okay? So make sure that when you're using this expression, you're using the actual area. So just so everybody's clear on the terms, we've got PU minus, that's B, that's alpha, that's 0.85, that's FC prime, that's AG. And then this is B, alpha, FY, 0.85. Just so you see where all these values are coming from. What are we getting? 3.31 inches squared. Do I have a second on that? Okay. Now, what I would then do is with this value, I would then go to, I'd use my beam design aid because the beam design aid has the areas of multiple bars. Y'all remember this? So you can use this one uh, as well. Um, what I would do is I would try and look at the bar multiples. And when I do this, there's a couple things that you'll want to look at from a practical standpoint. One thing that you really usually don't do is you don't specify a number of bars that doesn't have a degree of symmetry to it. So, like... One, like So you're going to have ties around the, the, the shape, and that's what your bars are going to tie to. So you wouldn't specify like five bars. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. You're probably going to specify like an even number of bars, something like six or eight or, or something to that nature. Does that make sense? So I'm going to try and look at even multiples of bars. I'm probably not going to look at number threes or number fours. Like I need 18 bars. That's ridiculous. Um, so what was the number? 3.31? Is that what the number was? Okay, so number fives, that'd be like 12 bars. That's a bit much. Um, what about number sixes? I can get by with eight bars with number sixes. Let's try that because I can probably have a column and I can do like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably a good, good bet. Or if that doesn't work, I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That actually like that one better. Let's do that. Let's do eight number sixes. Now, how specifically do you lay that out? Like wh which one's which? I'll show you that here in a second. So let's use eight number six bars. And so AST is 3.53 inches squared. Now what's the actual row value? What happens if you take this and divide it by that? I'm just curious. Zero, one, eight. Zero, one, eight. So 0 0.018. So what happened was this was the row value that we estimated. We used a bigger column, so by using a bigger column, we were able to use less reinforcement. So the actual reinforcement ratio is different. That's completely fine. Okay? Um, now, theoretically, your, a, your row value should be less than 0 0.02 because you made the column bigger. However, looking at your, beam, uh, your design aid, you know there's only so many multiples of bars, so sometimes this effect won't be as pronounced. Something to keep in mind. Okay. <coughs> so, we've got our column basically figured out. So, there's just a couple things that we need to figure out in order to fully design the, uh, design the column out. So, let's look at tie selection. And space. Now, what are the size of the longitudinal bars that we're using? They're number what? 
Sixes. So what size tie should I use? Number three or number four? That's my hint. Got to go through your notes. No, 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 not number six. Hold on, hold on. Three is if the long machine is No, it's not. It's not number six. You're you're right that it's number three, but it's not. It, the number six isn't the cutoff. Number ten is the cutoff. Remember, here's the tie collar requirements, and if your longitudinal bars are up to a number ten, you use a number three. Anything bigger than a number ten, you use a number four bars. So we're going to use number three ties. Longitudinal bars, smaller than a number 10, so that means use number 3 ties. Alright, how do we determine how far apart the ties are spaced? Let me ask you this. <coughs> Do I want to design a column that has a boatload of ties or as few ties as possible? Few as possible. Few as possible because the more ties means more labor. So I'm going to determine the spacing of my ties based not on minimum tie spacing but off of maximum tie spacing. So what's the maximum tie spacing? for a square tie column. How do we do that? It's the smallest of there we go. 48 tie bar diameters. All right, hold on that. Let's do each one one at a time. 48 tie bar diameters. So 48 times what? What's the diameter of our tie bar? 3 eighths. It's a number 3. So what's 48 times 3 eighths? 18. 18. What was the second one? 16 longitudinal bar diameters. So 16 times what? What's the diameter of a longitudinal bar? Six eighths. It's a number six, right? Anything number eight and smaller, the diameter is just six over eight. And so what is that? Twelve inches. And what is the, the other one? And what is that going to be for this column? 14. It's 14 by 14, right? So, so which one of these is going to govern? The 12. So the column is starting to look like it makes sense. We have square column, 14 inches by 14 inches. We've got eight bars. We've got their number sixes. We've got ties going around them that are number threes, and they're going to be spaced 12 inches on center, right? So the only thing that we have to sort of figure out is whether or not our column looks like this, or it looks like that, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that this works, okay? I'm going to assume that that works, and I'm going to check that assumption here in a second. I got, before I do that, I'm going to do one thing. We have two remaining limits. So we're going to use this. Two remaining limits. First one is row G which we already computed that, it was AST over AG, so that's 3.53 inches squared over 196 inches squared, and that equals 
0.018. Why is that a check? What does that value have to be? Is it bigger than, smaller than, what's the deal? Has to be between 1% and 8%. And are we good there? We're good, right? It's between 0 0.01 and 0 0.08. That's good. Now, the big one is how do I figure out whether or not this works or this works? I've got to check the clear bar spacing. Okay? So, does anybody remember how to do that? Let's assume that this one is the one that we're using. How do we do that? We start on 14 inches wide, right? Then what do we do? We come in a little bit. How much do we come in on each side? Better remember what the cover is for a reinforced interior column? One and a half inch. So we have a column. We're going to come in an inch and a half on each side. Then what are we going to do? We got, we got to do the tie diameter on each side. All right. So let me draw this a little more, a little more like physical, you know, accurately. All right. So. Here's our tie diameter. Here's our tie bar. <coughs> and then we've got one, two, three, right? So we got 14 inches, <coughs> come in an inch and a half on each side, come in two tie diameters on each side, and then what do we do? We subtract one, two, three of those, and then what do we do? I'm asking, I'm not going to say. We divide by two, right? Remember, take that whole space and divide it by two. So, 14 inches minus two times 1.5 inches minus two times three eighths of an inch minus three times what's the longitudinal bar diameter? Six eighths. Six eighths or three fourths, and we divide that by two. this come out today? Scary is a good answer, bad answer. With like, what's the limit? Is what I'm asking. Six inches. So, are we good? Yeah, we're good. This is good. It's good because it's less than six inches. What if it was greater than six inches? Well, what I could do is I could say, well, instead of this pattern, why don't I try this pattern? Why don't I try, you know, a bar here and a bar there? Because that's going to cut that space down a bit. I can still use the same reinforcement pattern, only instead of doing, you know. And that doesn't affect it. The capacity? I mean, not the other way. Well, remember, these are going to be tucked into the corner of that tie, remember? Oh, yeah. Remember, you don't have to check the spacing if it's tucked into a corner, only if it's on an edge. That's a good question. Everybody okay with that? So what's our answer? Here's our answer. We have... Square column, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reinforcing bars, so eight number sixes. We have a tie going around. Forgive me, I'm trying to do better with that. Oh, that's I can do. Alright. We have 
1.5 inch cover. These are number threes at what spacing? How far apart are the, the, the ties spaced along column? 12. 12 inches. And this dimension is 14 inches. This dimension, 14 inches. And you all just designed the column. Boom. So go to your Third Avenue parking garage. Once you determine the load on that column, there's your column size. We didn't consider how tall the column is. Is it higher column? That's a good question. And that, and so what we're using is short column behavior, assuming that the column isn't going to buckle. Um, which is, if you're dealing with somewhat short columns, that's not a big deal. Um, when you're dealing with a super high long bridge meter, then yeah, it, it's an issue. And the short answer is you just handle it like you, essentially like you would in what we do in seal design, like uh, uh, KL over R and the alignment charts, it's all the same stuff. Um, but I'm not going to make you do that in here. Yes? What's like the dimension to where it's considered a short column? Um, typical story to story columns in buildings, that, that, that can be fine. Um, there is no, like, I'm trying to give you a good answer to this. Um, re in reality, you would kind of need to check both. Um, but let me, let me, let me try and I will make up some numbers. Okay. You're in steel design, right? Yeah. Oh, all right. So this is not something I'm going to make you do on an exam or anything. So, but this will just give you kind of a rough idea, okay? So, let's say that the E value is something like 3,600 KSI. Now, do you all remember how to compute E for concrete? 57,000 times square root of FC prime? So, that, that's probably going to be close enough for, for what we're talking about. Now, what's the moment of inertia of this going to be? It's 14 inches to the fourth over 12, right? BH cubed over 12. So what is that? <coughs> Say it again. 32 over. Right? So the radius of gyration is the square root of I over A, which is what? I'm not making y'all do this on the exam, so don't worry. Okay, so uh, let's say that the column is 10 feet long, right? And let's say it's pin pin, so k is 1. What's k L over r? Say it again. 29.7. 29.7. So what's, so how about this? Um, let's take P critical as pi squared EI, or no, 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 sorry, sorry. Let's do F critical. F critical is pi squared <coughs> E divided by K over R squared. What's that going to be? You folks who are running seals on, don't worry. We're not doing this on an exam. This is just us having fun with it. 324.5 KSI. So what's FCR times A? So it would take 63,000 kips to buckle that column. You see what I mean? As opposed to 444 kips to just buckle, to just fail it in compression. So you see what I mean? So 
If you want an answer as to what the length is, if you want a simple answer, just increase the, the length until this number matches 444. You know, that's what, that's what I'm saying. There's not a real, like, good answer that's direct. It just depends. So, but what we can do is we could do this in Excel and throw a goal seek on it and see how long the column needs to be, and it, it'll give you an answer. Now, that's a very simplistic view of, like, how you really handle issues with slender columns. But, like, for the Third Avenue parking garage, or for it, or for a typical reinforced concrete structure, not a big deal. That makes sense. What is a big deal, though, is when you have loads taking, when you have a column and the column is being loaded in compression and it's being bent. And that's what we do next. So. Any questions on this? All right. This is good stuff. I like this stuff. All right. Let's try and start our next column design problem. We may not finish it, we'll see. But this column is, so we just did example 19A. Let's see if we can chip away some stuff with 19B. Um, 19B is a round spiral column. Um, and I, I'm probably going to go through it really quickly, but there's nothing in this example that's not terribly different from what we just did except for how we spot size the spiral reinforcement and the fact that we're looking at a circle instead of a square. Um, in fact, let me screen flip this. Do you have a second on that? Yep. All right. 
265.8 what? There we go. Now, do I take the circle root? <laughs> yes. The circle root, right? No. Uh, in order to determine that diameter, I'm going to take um, 4 over pi AG min. And so what's that going to be?
5.99 inches squared. Do I have a second on that? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to call it there. I will go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. We end up just using six number nines. So six number nines is six square inches. So, um, so we can do that. But we will finish this example next time, uh, which will only take like a minute. And then we're going to spend the rest of really the semester, but Monday, looking at bean column interaction. Um, it's a really straightforward process, but it requires some design aids. One quick thing, free straight edge. Free straight edge on Monday. It'll help.